All right. Hello. Oh, I am much quieter than music. There we go. Hello, everyone. Hope you all are having a good evening. I have three wonderful guests for day seven of spoiler season for Rebellion Without Rehearsal. However, they cannot be heard yet, but I will remember to turn it on this time. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm excited. We finally have some Shaper cards to talk about. We just have to talk about every other faction first. Um, but uh, I've got three wonderful guests to talk about these cards with me today. First up, Anarcho Mushroom. If you could introduce yourself and uh, tell us all a little bit about your history with Netrunner, that would be great. Uh, hello, um, my name is Anarcho, Anarcho Mushroom, or Podrig. Um, I've been playing Netrunner for, shoot, six years now? I got six? Five. I think I can't remember. It was right, uh, right after I think Downfall came out. Um, uh, yeah, I've been playing since then. Um, I've been mostly these days running um, events in Ireland and Dublin, um, and kind of building up our meta. Um, uh, I've been. Oh, I was in NSG for a while. I completely forgot about that. Um, I was, uh, yeah, I was lead producer for NSG for a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, I like to shout about Shaper and Yellow Assets. So I'll get to do one of my shows uh, this evening. All right, Ed, I've got, uh, actually, you know what? I've got Funky Man up next on the credits. So Dan, if you would give, wouldn't mind introducing yourself to the stream and let everyone know who you are. Sure thing. Hey everyone, I'm Dan, otherwise known as Funky Man. Um, I am from the Boston meta, so I started playing this game in like 2022, I think. Uh, so a little fresh on the block, but I've been loving every minute. Glad to, uh, you know, start hanging out with some of the crew up in Boston and, and Jeff. And it's been a really nice warm welcome, so couldn't have picked a better place to, to get started. Um, yeah, really excited to be on the stream today, and uh, I've been dipping my toes into getting some events organized and helping out where I can, so yeah, yes. happy to be here. Fantastic. Thanks so much for coming on. And last but most certainly least, uh, we've got Ed. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I, I prefer to be called Boss, please. <laughs> oh, excuse me. My boss, Ed. Uh... <laughs> oh, hi there. Hi, it's me, Ed. How are you doing? <laughs> Um, so my name's Ed. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I am the vice president of engagement for Null Signal Games. Um, I've been in the game for about three years now. I started playing sort of more frequently at the start of COVID times. I did a lot of playtesting for Gateway. Then I spent a bit of time in GLC, um, in the mod team, jumped into the marketing department for NSG, and then I got a promotion, a very nice promotion, and now I'm one of the exec team. Um, I've got a bit of history with the uh, with one of the um, <laughs> cast members this evening, Jeff. I mean, I, I also chat is. I can is hear call, laughing. <laughs> chat is calling out that you also are the original daily caster, and I inherited the mantle from you. Um, I think for uh, the Bore the first set of the Borealis cycle, uh, but you you did the marathon. Uh, month-long gateway daily casts uh and i do not understand how you do it it is day seven and i'm already tired so <laughs> yeah it was quite exhausting i think i had one i did take one day off for like you know mental health reasons um mm -hmm. but there wasn't a lot to do around those times was there so that's um, true it was a different time yeah and I, I like that you did ask permission to take over the daily casts uh yeah. so thank you Thank you. You wouldn't have needed permission. You could have taken it away from me. <laughs> I think that's basically what you said. But uh, anyway, uh, we should, you know, seven cards, still quite a bit. And, um, you know, you and Anarcho, I think, have maybe the most infamous daily cast of all time together. So I do want to be uh, somewhat cognizant of the clock. As I, <laughs> as I was telling you all before this call, I also need to edit my video for spoilers to drop tomorrow morning. So... Uh, like yeah, Jeff, well, you could just like leave after an hour, like you know, you could just let me and Ed like take over. <laughs> like, I don't think anything bad could happen. <laughs> That's probably fair. Uh, yeah, no nothing will happen at hour three of daily cast that will be notable for a while. No, not at all. 
Uh, but very first up, we have the Wizard's Chest. This is a zero-cost hardware. This is Richard Hall, also known as Lime's World Championship card. The text on this is, Use this hardware only if you made a successful run on HQ, R&D, and Archives this turn. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, wait, what? This is not the... Oh, oh, I... Oh, goodness, I'm getting baited by the chat. Okay. Trash, <laughs> choose hardware, program, or resource. Set aside cards from the top of your stack face up until you set aside two cards of the chosen type. You may install one of those two cards, ignoring all costs. Shuffle the rest of the set-aside cards into your stack. Um, if you if people have not read this, uh, read it on the NSG site today. Uh, Limes put together a little article about how this is a tribute to the Colorado game scene's local game store. Uh, it is fantastically done. I think the article is well worth a read. And the picture of the actual game store is, is quite... Uh, amazing um, but I've now talked for a bit I would love to have Anarcho take it away with uh, her initial takes um, yeah I was saying this like in, in Slack and GLC earlier um, but I um, I think this might be my um, favorite card in the set so far um, really like when you pair it with the um the article as well that rich wrote um it's just you know it's very rare it's a very difficult like prize to win is a champ card because you got to win worlds and that's kind of the hardest thing like winning worlds is is very very tough and very few people ever get the opportunity to do it and you know you're given this sort of ticket to like introduce a card into the game forever and you can define a meta with it you know you could print something really really powerful um and kind of game defining but i think the fact that rich like put together a um a card that is basically a love letter to his local game store who are like i think we can all agree it's kind of the backbone of every good gaming scene in any city or town or whatever is is fueled by your lgs um i just think it's so sick the flavor the the art the the theming of it it's all great um the effect like i don't think this is going to blow away standard i don't think we're going to see this you know on the ban list at any point but i think it's well if it does that'd be kind of sick but um i don't think this is going to be you know meta breaking but it's just a great card. It's just really, really cool. It's a great use of a, a champ card. Um, and yeah, I think it's, I just think it's so sick. It's so, so sick. Dan, I want to give you a chance to, to opine a little bit on this card as well. Totally. I, I agree. I think it's such a cool card. And I think it's the type of card that allows you to. Oh, I don't know, do some of the crazy deck building in your head that can just be so fun and exciting, regardless of whether it ends up working or not. I think it's one of those cards that inspires. Um, and the thing that I appreciate the most about it is that um, it seems like the most anarch way to, to tutor something. It, you, know, you do have to go through a lot of hoops, and then it's like a lot of work to make happen, and then when you finally do it, it's still like luck of the draw. You know, not that... Not that Anarch needed more tools to get through there the deck, but like if you were to give that faction this type of ability, I'm glad it is in this like interesting, exciting, slightly convoluted method. And you know, you still have to just go with the best of what you pulled. So like I, I, I kind of agree that they really like nailed it on this one in terms of like creating a fun, interesting, and hopefully effective card. question for all the guests. Um do you think this is kind of early game tempo and you're trying to get your, your rig set up? Or do you think this is more like a, a late game Doom rig thing where you can actually get through all three servers? I think you want to use this to like, cheat out something silly, right? Like, my first thought when I saw this was like, this is an amazing cube card. <laughs> like, if I see this pack yeah. one, pick one in a cube, I'm totally slamming this down and then I'm going to look for like a monolith or an endurance, or something big and silly, because that's that's what I'd want to do. I think this is an awesome cube card. 
Yeah, and it like begs the question of like, well, what what are you trying to cheat out? You know, right now in standard, like I I can't think of something that is like going to be your your game winner at the end of the game. I'd rather get the mod down early than at the end. You know, so like I think I would end up using it as an earlier pressure tool. Um, but I I try to do early pressure no matter what deck I'm playing for better or for worse. I I like the fact that it's only to influence as well. I know there's it's quite thematically anarch um would you see it splashed in other uh factions as well uh, maybe shaper might like splash like one or two copies um mm -hmm. crim also is like you can play it in sable as well i don't know what you're cheating out in crim but like shaper has a lot of big silly costed installs that like i'm sure they'd love this you know slap a piece of show down and you get like a bunch of value on your your central runs so you can use your big new powerful like car that you've just installed mm -hmm. I, I do think it'll probably feel better as like a deep dive support piece where you have more reasons to run all the servers than just popping the wizard's chest uh, but well that was a fun sense to say um but it's like are, are you really gonna are you really gonna go through all that work just to like pull out i don't know Turbine? It's like, well, you already ran all the servers. Too late. Uh, yeah, I, that's kind of why I'm like, I do wonder if you could see it, like, in those Hoshiko decks where, like, oh, hey, you you can put this down just on the table, and now suddenly when you make, like, a probing run on the centrals, like, it becomes a lot more threatening for the corp. Like, oh, yeah, the corp PD is trying to score turn one, or not, not turn one, sorry. Like, it's turn three or four, PD is trying to score, and you just say, okay, good run on HQ. What are you going to do? Good run R&D. What are you going to do? All right, I guess I get it. Or, okay, I guess I'll run the remote, click three, instead of running archives, right? Uh, like, it's a, it's a neat little card um, to some extent, I think, for that. Now, is that a consistent game plan? Probably not, right? But, you know, it's a, it's definitely an interesting card and not one, you know... Uh, one that I think is like offers some really fun fantasies and like you know will always be a thing that I think people always are like oh I did the I got my wizard's chest off and this next thing happened right like there's that this is one of those great like storytelling cards as well yeah that's why I, I think agree. it's so cool in cube because it is like You'll talk. You you'll you'll pull it off in a cube game or whatever, and it'll be like, "Oh my god, I popped my wizard's chest turn one, got a monolith, and I was able to play like keyhole, sneak door beta, uh, Ingolo on turn one, and that's that's just a sick, <laughs> that's just a sick game of memory to have." <laughs> Cool. Well, do we want to move on to the next card? Or does anyone have some final thoughts they want to put on this one before we keep moving? I just think it's lovely that a card like this is printed that isn't necessarily super powerful, but it's super fun. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and people have been crying out for more of that. Yeah, and I, I think there's, I think there's a couple of those cards potentially today. Um, this next one, I this is an interesting one to evaluate, and I'm very curious to hear all of your takes on it. Uh, though also it seems like Ed's determined to do my job tonight, so maybe I'll just step away from the keyboard after I read out this card. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, it makes my night easier. Uh, this is a one-cost run event out of Criminal. It is called Window of Opportunity. You may install one program or piece of hardware from your grip. Run any server. When that run begins, derez one piece of ice protecting that server. When that run ends, the court may res the ice de-res this way, ignoring all costs. And this is two influence. So, Ed, I'd actually love to get your take first on what is this card? What What's the first thing that strikes you when you look at this card? Um, I've got I've got two takes. Um, one, I saw um, both of these are stolen from other people. Um, I'm not quite smart enough to come up with my own takes. Uh, <laughs> There's a few cards uh, so far on this set that give you that extra kind of half a click. Um, you know, I think potentially as a run event that costs one, 
uh, it's powerful without the, uh, you may install one program or piece of hardware from your grip. Um, and that, that really, I think, pushes the card. I think it's super strong. And part B, a lot of people have been saying it, but the obvious synergy with Hermes here, where you know you can get in and, and bounce back the ice that you've derezzed. Oh yeah, that's a very nice little synergy. If the corp chooses not to re-res that ice, which they're kind of incentivized not to because they're going to get it for free, you just go and snipe mm -hmm. an agenda, boom, there it goes. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, um, it's cool. I think this is like, I really like, um, I think one of my favorite things in, in Netrunner in terms of like cards are cards with cool... I like cool run events that aren't just like value pieces. Um, and this is like, obviously the, you do gain value from it. You get a, a, an install out of it. Um, in theory, you get a you get a clickless install out of it. Um, but I think it's like, it's a really interesting, like aggressive tool that something like Zaya could use. Um, I know there was the like the twinning Chesve, like aggressive Zaya deck. Um, and this is the kind of thing that like you can that deck kind of struggles with getting into remotes. This is a cool like remote buster because either you can use it on the remote itself and like slap down a boomerang and get in, or you can use it on a central and you put the corp in a, a tough spot where they have to go like, do I re-res this like piece of ice on my central and make my remote weaker or my scoring ability weaker? Or do I just let them go in and potentially get, you know, three or four accesses off a of twinning and a Docklands? Um and yeah, I think it's a cool, like, aggressive tool for Krim that has some fun, like, you know, um, fun, like, other plays that you can do with it with stuff like Boomerang or Hermes or somebody in chat mentioned Saki, which sounds, like, kind of fun. That's a cool little, like, four-credit, like, gain there. You get a little sure gamble on your, your run event. Um, yeah, it's cool. And it's only two influence. Like, you could splash this. I, I kind of want to play this in, like, Arasana. Because it sounds funny in Arasana. Gee, I'm, I'm shocked you'd want to play a card in Arasana that does a little bit of a weird thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, no, Dan, I, I think... Agree. I... Well, I, I wanted to say that I, I agree that playing this in Arasana sounds fun. I, I'm very interested in playing like the more events-based Arasana decks. I mean, maybe it was just because Jeff was having fun showing Burner off at the weekly meetups, but... I, I think like having a couple of these interesting tools well, that aren't just like build the massive engine, which is less my style, I think is going to make it a lot of fun for me. But I think the best part about this card and cards like it is that it's full of decisions, right? Installing any program or any piece of hardware can create like so many different divergent game states in so many different matchups. And I think that is like a massive area of fun and excitement to be had. Yeah, I think this is a very neat card. You know, I had pulled up Inside Job as like a kind of like, you know, this has been the criminal mainstay and it doesn't always make it into every criminal deck, but it will often, you know, it seems very cyclical on whether or not criminals are running Inside Job or not. And Window of Opportunity is like an interesting spin where it's got some some real disadvantages in certain board states, but in in other ones, it's like a much more impactful card. I think that's kind of... Uh, a fun little space for a card to be where sometimes it's much better and sometimes it's it's uh much worse and that's a that's a very neat little niche for a card um but yeah any other thoughts before we move on i think it's uh it's nice to see a DRS card that people didn't universally hate the moment they saw it oh that's actually a very <laughs> good shout <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jai calling out, uh, this is a really good tech against Ob turn one, if they go like install advance in Oaktown behind it, um, where you just install face check and then window to install, like, uh, use your window of opportunity to install a Hermes and then run the Oaktown, bouncing the BC back to hand, Corp starts their second turn on two credits, and Runner has Hermes in play, that seems, uh, quite rude, but... I think we now know what's going to keep Jeff up at night. He's going to wake yeah. up in a cold sweat and he's just going to imagine that play. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness, that is going to be in my nightmares now, Jai. Um, we have another criminal card to talk about, though. Uh, and this one is maybe the one that's going to wake me up in those mornings. Uh, this is Alarm Clock. Uh, this is a two-cost hardware. When your turn begins, you may run HQ. The first time you encounter a piece of ice during that run, you may spend click-click to bypass it. And this is three influence. Four. Sorry, four influence. Thank you, Ed. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dan, I'd love to hear your takes first on Alarm Clock. Where do you think this goes? Well, obviously it goes in my Mercury Logic Bomb deck. Um, I, I love playing Mercury. I'm glad to see more support for it. But I don't actually know how often it's going to be worth to spend two clicks on Bypass. Um, like, I, you, you can get that effect in a lot of other ways, even clicklessly. So I, I think it's going to be like a, a fun tool to play around with, but I don't know if it's ever going to be the best tool to play around with. But when I am stacking all of my Bypass effects with Logic Bomb and uh, Backstitching, like, it'll feel great. Yeah, I mean, I think unlike Logic Bomb and Backstitching, like, this isn't going to trash itself, right? This is every turn, gain a click to make it on an HQ. Like, you know, this is to some extent like a, you know, always be running. It's a card people are shouting out in chat. And uh, this is like a click cheaper than always be running and is a bypass rather than a subroutine break, which seems like uh, quite the upgrade for our, our new Byroid friend. Yeah, I, th I think this is like... Um quite good i think um it's a tricky one to find like a slot in sort of like the existing crim decks just because you have so many cards that you want to put in but like and also you kind of have some issues of like people already icing hq however like you put this in something like zaya like agro zaya um you run you get your docklands value you get your Zaya money, you get your twinning, you charge your awake, and then you've still got four clicks to challenge the remote, to go on a big R&D dig, to set up your own board. In Sable, this is just kind of gas, because you get, if HQ is your mark, you get your five-click turn um, straight off the bat, which is kind of um, a little bit ridiculous. Um, and yeah, it's, it's also just a cool card, and it's a cool throwback to... Um, to to adam um i know myself and ed played a lot of adam this is mm -hmm. a cool like call back to 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 always be running um can't believe we live in a world where we've power crept always be running but here we are um yeah I don't, I, the card's cool it's a fun like um yeah it's a fun um it's a fun like little include in these like aggressive criminal decks um, somebody else in chat mentioned that it's like possibly bonkers in like Lou, Mulch Lou, which honestly I could see. I could see it being very good in the Mulch decks, like after a purge and you run HQ, you get your knob curry value, you charge your imp, you trash a piece from HQ and like straight away you are, you are back in the game. You have your engine up and running again and it's only cost you two clicks. Um, I think that's like quite good. Um, finding four influences is, is going to be tough, but like <laughs> if you can slot it in, that's great. Yeah, that is a that is a big cost for the loot deck. It is this pretty influence pinched? Um, so yeah, I I see uh, Andre asking chat. You can't play it on event. Nope, this is just begin a run on HQ when your start when your turn begins. Jamie saying you can choose to do this before or after the the sables mark is rolled, which. While I agree, Jamie, that is technically something you can do, uh, your mark doesn't roll over between turns, so there's no real advantage to doing it. It is basically strictly bad to alarm clock run HQ before you know your mark. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's a thing. Um, and then, actually, a question for the crowd. Uh, Not again was asking... We're ba if this card is getting banned right away, what are what are? I'd love to hear everyone's take on that. Is this a, is this a bannable level card? It's it's too um it's too limited to ban right. 
like it's probably a little bit over the the threshold of of like an average balanced card but i just i don't feel like there's enough scope for it to be devastating on a meta it's just um a tool that maybe aggressive criminal needed um yeah, I think it's pretty yeah. fine. It's it's a yeah. strong card, but not ban worthy. I think that's kind of where like most cards should end up. A little bit above rate, but not like too far. If this gets banned, I I really want to know what the meta is like where this card has to get banned. That sounds spicy. I, I think yes. I think if it was on R and D, I think if it's on R and D, you could potentially see a world where it becomes quite devastating. But on HQ, like, what are you really doing with that other than getting lock on HQ? If it shows up in, like, taking up all the influence in every Hoshiko deck, like, you know, maybe maybe we think about banning it. But there's been, like, a lot of HQ-focused, um, you know, events and hardware, like, in this whole set. So I, I think everyone's just going to learn to protect HQ a little harder than usual. Yeah, it does feel like runners are being given a lot of tools to apply pressure to HQ. And conversely, we're seeing a lot of tools from the corpse to just, like, do really powerful stuff out of HQ or off the board. Um, so, you know, that does seem uh, impactful. Um, this is also a Team Bird card, uh, for those of, those of you keeping track at home, I guess. <laughs> uh, and we have one more criminal card to talk about. Uh, which is Maladegra nope, Malindragum is going to be my guess at this uh, I did listen to the Shadow Net, I listened to it at two times speed and mostly just heard Eric tripping over trying to say this card uh, so um, <laughs> uh, this is a four cost one MU program uh, this is when you install this program, load two power counters onto it. When it is empty, remove it from the game. Whenever you encounter a piece of ice, if its strength is three or less, you may remove one hosted power counter to bypass it. Use this ability only once per turn. Threat four, whenever you encounter a piece of ice, you may remove this program from the game to bypass it. So this card is apparently so powerful it removes itself from the game twice i'd love to hear uh anarcho <laughs> your initial takes on this card so when i saw this first i thought it came in with three counters and i was like this card is absolutely fucking cracked um am i allowed to swear what's the yeah, swear yeah. in my part Oh, I, I wasn't. I okay, wasn't cool. going to make you and Ed come on a show and not be able to swear. <laughs> if I didn't want, I swearing... never swear. I don't swear. Okay, that's horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Anarcho, if I wanted to have a swearing-free show, I would just say thank you for coming. I'm going to find a different show for us to be on together. <laughs> um, yeah. When, when I saw this, I misread it. I thought it came with three counters. Um, and I was like, that is like completely fucking bonkers. Um, I'm putting this in every Krim deck and probably every Shaper deck. Uh, then I read it and I was like, okay, maybe it's not as amazing. I think this is quite useful. Um, it's, I think you, you're going to find issues finding deck slots to play it in. Um, um, and also a time to use it. But in theory, you do get a bunch of, you do, it is two inside jobs stapled together that you can use kind of relatively whenever you need to. Um, there are limitations, but like, I think it's like, it's an interesting, powerful card. The art rocks. Um, the art is, is so sick. It's an Adam Doyle piece. Um, I think he's done the other like hand focused art in NSG. Uh, I think he did Vig. I think he did Ubiquitous Vig, which is a bunch of hands. Um, Adam Dole in the pocket of big hands, I guess. Um, but uh, I yeah, I cares? will say there in in the uh, hand pantheon. I uh, I have to give a shout out to my good boy Scott Uminga, uh, who not only did Tithe, 
um, but also did the drafter promo that uh, I wrote the brief for. So uh, you know we have we have two hand guys in Netrunner as far as I'm aware. Uh, so real, but, a real battle of the it's it's the Scott the Scott school of thought and the Adam Doyle school of thought of of hands. I think Adam like I think Adam likes two hands, but two big hands, and Scott likes multiple hands. Who did the did the thimble rig alt art? Doesn't that one have large hands? Well? Oh, that one does have hands. I think that is Scott as well. Scott. It's also okay. Pretty good. All right, I'm gonna have a take on this. Um, and it's been I've, I've noticed in the chat a few people are saying it as well. Right. Are you importing stuff to get charge counters on this, to get power counters on? I don't think you are. But if you can find a way to to find the influence to bring in something like a uh, spark of inspiration, is that what I mean? Um, I don't, I mean rigging up. Um, then, as, as Shroom said, like three counters is more than one counters more powerful, I feel um because it's got uh longevity as a as a card um that's my thoughts yeah i think you know chat is calling out hey rather than trying to import rigging up into crim uh we should import mal maldogram maldo nope uh this program uh i'm just gonna call it mal uh <laughs> they call mal into padma uh right um who will charge this and like blank ice all i do also ixeron asked the question of what percent of ice are three strength or less and they quote 50 percent. i think that's of all ice because i remember running wow. these numbers and it's actually higher if you look at standard only i think it's close to 60 to 70 percent of ice and standard are strength three or less wow. um wow that that Okay, that surprises me. I think it kind of like I think it it is interesting because it's like if you look at the first thing that I'm thinking of, like if I'm putting this into my Padma deck, this is a very or not a very efficient, but it's a relatively stress free way of dealing with Drafter, which is something that Shaper kind of struggles with a lot in the current meta because your options are Echelon, which like don't think about trying to break drafter with echelon until you have two other breakers it will make you sad um and then you have eco which is again not super useful so like in this fun like build your own endurance deck in padma <laughs> with um this program um it's i i don't know i think this can be like kind of fun um and i see as well people mentioning that you can symbol chip it um to to reload it which is kind of like you have this cool like repeatable engine with it so that you keep getting value out of it and you keep charging it with padma and it kind of becomes this useful like breaking case of emergency uh ice breaking solution um yeah it's cool it's 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 it, again it's like it's not probably not going to be like a super meta definingly powerful card but it's a card that has like you can like look at it and think what fun stuff can I do with this and what silly decks can I build with this? And I think those are cool cards to exist. Uh Dan, I'm, I'm surprised with all the Yeah, I, I I'm surprised with all of the from game pieces that like you can even symbol chip it. I guess, you know, before you lose that last counter is is when you're able to. Um and it might also my other hot take is that since it's like a hand shuffling cards i'm gonna say you pronounce it malandragum you know like you're dragging the cards it's got to be the name of like a card trick or something that's my take um i think somebody also in the chat called it like a, a bad amakua um but how about you pair it with amakua like what a good way to get your yourself in a couple of pieces of ice if you like get locked out a little bit if it's lower strength or even just as like a really strong one two early combo in crim um I feel like that could do a lot of work for you um, if we're already playing aggressive criminals with some of the other cards. I also want to shout out, someone in the chat was asking, so De uh, Devil Charm uh, and um, uh, what was the, and uh, 
Monkey Wrench, uh, both work with this, right? Um, I will call it specifically Leech doesn't um, because Malindrome, Malindragum, uh interacts when uh, is when encountering uh, or when encounters, excuse me, and leeches while encountering. There is one other card, and this is a, a an FFG old school card, Ice Carver, uh, that also uh, kind of will work with Mal Malindragum. Um, and it will lower ice strength to it will allow you to hit ice up to printed strength four so uh that is a huge huge portion of the card pool um so i don't know that that definitely like it's probably a little bit silly to like play like either one way or the other you're spending three four or if you're playing this in shaper seven influence to make these cards work together but it is a, a, a cute little act interaction i want to call out um someone also asked like hey what ice like do you see in the meta that this can bypass and i'm like well you know we can start with border control we can move on to ping right we've got all of the non-blue harmonics we've got uh i don't know i'm just like starlight knight we've got drafter uh which is obviously an important one um i don't know and you know Tatu Bola, we've got, you know, Thimble Rig, obviously. Like, there's a lot of ice that you see quite a bit of that this card does just let you kind of walk past. Uh, people in the chat are calling out Sisenton, uh, you know. Um, I, so this card definitely had, like, you know, you think like, oh, well, there's, it can't bypass everything, so it can't be used. But I, I always wonder if it's like, well, but maybe it can bypass enough stuff. Uh, Wowerlock is calling out Tour Guide, uh, probably just for you and me and Arco. Um, but maybe, maybe this is Crim's eternal solution to Tour Guide. That that would be very fitting for the running theme of NSG printing cards in like a couple cards in each set that are a little bit underwhelming in standard, but are like critical pieces in a turn. <laughs> <laughs> we got greeting yeah. the palm last set and uh, now we get um melandrogram to uh to help like pawn shop Haley in the 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 asset matchups hooey mm. all right any uh final thoughts before we move on to uh our hb card because i did say up front that shaper had to be last today Cool All right, well, cool let's talk about another an ice that has three or less strength. Uh, so we have another whole target. Um, we've got Sorkaban Blade. This is a four to res, two strength, century destroyer out of HB. It has the rules text. You cannot trash more than one installed runner card with this ice during each encounter. And it says... So it has three subroutines, which are trash one installed resource, trash one installed piece of hardware, trash one installed program. Uh, and at Thunderbolt, we ask, why not turn plowshares to swords? Uh, and this is a great Ed Mateen piece uh, that was discussed on the... Nope. Nope. Where, was... Where did I hear people talking about this? On Jai's stream? I'm making that up. Yes, on Jai's stream. Thank you. Um, no, that's that's definitely where it was. I was I this morning. I have lis I listened to Slums Cast, uh, Jai's stream, and uh, the Shadow Net. So it's my my brain is a little bit of a jumble. But <laughs> uh, Ed, I'd love to I'm hear. Not even no single station. Uh, well, I listened to that yesterday. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gotta, gotta what a fantastic up. podcast that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's really hard to get them to come on and guess on other things, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> yeah, you have to try really hard. Should I talk yeah. about this card? I would love if you could talk about this card. I've got a little bit of um, interest in... I, I uh, edited the art brief on this one. 
I didn't write it because I'm not talented, but I put the words in the right order. Um, I, I love this art. Can I just say? I think it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm really, really, really keen on this. Um, I'm struggling with this card. And and it might just be, you know, I'm not great at passing cards. I didn't see much discussion about it either. Mm-hmm. Um, how likely is it ever that the second subroutine fires? I think pretty, like, there's very few decks now that, are, that aren't running some kind of important piece of hardware. Um, I do, like, you look at Mulch, obviously, as Knob Korean Simul Chips. Um, mm-hmm. Zaya and Sable have Hermes and Doctor of the Pass and potentially Wake. Um, like, the second sub, I think, will fire. I think the, like, I think the issue... Wait, I'll, I'll, I'll interject quickly. I'm yeah. not understanding this card then, because if it's not broken, then you trash a resource and then that's it. Right, like I think, I think the issue. Oh wait, the subs fire in order. Oh, yeah. subs fire in order. So yeah, so you will only trash a piece of hardware if there are no installed resources, and then you will oh. only trash a program if there are no installed resources or no installed hardware, or the runner only breaks some subset and kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so and this, text and I'm thinking, re- I'm thinking like like boomerang for example. Are you protecting your programs more likely than not? Um, uh so yeah yeah so it's interesting like this is this is like a this is a card that like it seems like it's punishing early game face checks where you have no tools to break this card or maybe insufficient tools to break this card um but the runner has a lot of ways of kind of softening the blow but conversely like in the end game right well, you probably have a resource installed that you don't want trashed. You probably have a hardware you install that you don't want trashed. And you probably have a program installed that you don't want trashed. Uh, so, like, it ends up being more taxing than Drafter in the late game, which I think is potentially a spot you could look at. Uh, it fits nicely in between Drafter and Ansel in terms of cost to res and probably also in between cost to break. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's it's tough to find a home for it is my only thing because you look at like you look at PD I think the ice slots in PD are pretty well defined now at this point especially the sentry slots because drafter is just so hard drafter does so much for you in that deck specifically um fool runs pretty ice light and again that would probably prefer like drafters or relatively cheap annoying um Face checks, which this can be annoying, um, but against Thule, you're probably not installing a huge amount of cards just because you don't have the the, the time to do it. Um, Thunderbolt is pretty um, is pretty good. This is probably like a big a big card for Thunderbolt, um, um, because in Thunderbolt it is potentially two trashes, which is pretty significant. Um, chat also pointing out that this is really good anti bankar tech which is um, very relevant right now, considering how good Bankar is in, in the current meta. So like, I think it has its place. I think it's interesting. Um, I think it's going to go in some HB decks, but not all. I don't know if it's going to be like a staple for the faction, but it's definitely one that I think like you can consider like now. Like If, if there's a ton of Bankar around, you probably maybe want one or two of these as a way to deter Bankar. Is there yeah. much support uh, in the set uh, for for this card other than Thunderbolt itself? I mean, I think saying... I don't know that we've seen that much under other than Thunderbolt itself, but, like, someone was asking the chat, so the subroutine it gains end the run unless the runner trashes one of their installed cards. Because it's the runner trashing their installed card, not Sorkavon Blade, you can get two trashes mm-hmm. out of this, out of Thunderbolt, and it goes up to okay. strength three, which is quite relevant for Carmen, which is like, oops, uh, Carmen, let's see if I can spell it correctly this time. Like, quite, like, is the Sentry Breaker de jure at the moment? And so that, like, you know, that, that adds up. And I feel like this, like, this makes a lot of sense in Thunderbolt. Um, and is more, like, meta call ish, I think, in other IDs. 
Um, but and I think also I would uh, agree. Oh, sorry, Dan. Please. Sorry, sorry to jump in. I was say I, I kind of agree for other decks instead of Thunderbolt because like paying four and it's only two strength like it feels a little bit rough. It's it's not quite over the curve enough to make sure you put it in every HP deck, but it is like a, such a punishing face check. Um, or at least it, it can be like a pretty demoralizing one. Um, and I think it's interesting that we're getting like another HB card that you'd really hate to face check. Like maybe not turn one, but turn one or two if you've installed something expensive, um, but that you probably still won't see it everywhere. I think we're going to currently play the game of should I just smash into all the HB ice early or not? Um, so I, I think I'll be, I'll be watching out for this one. Cause it'll, it'll get you. It'll get you at some point. Yeah, I think I think putting a little bit more face check punishment into the game is pretty good. And like to me, I look at this card, I'm like, well, it punishes face checks, and it's actually somewhat taxing for its res cost, right? It's only one less for the runner to break, assuming they have things. Um, but uh, you know, it's that's that's two out of three things, and it's very rare to get to get uh, the like all three of taxing and the run and uh, face check penalty. Chat is going wild about Loki, uh, where you can, yeah. until the end of the run, <laughs> Loki gains the subroutines. It doesn't gain all the texts. So now you have a, you've spent 10 credits, but now you've made the runner uh, trash and install resource, trash and install piece of hardware or trash and install program. And then end the run unless they shuffle their grip back into their stack. Uh, so it, you know, these could stack in an interesting way. It does also gain the subtypes, so if they have a Sentry Breaker out, they can still go through the Loki. Uh, but maybe they're like, I can deal with a Sorkamon Blade, but maybe the one strength hurdle is a big deal. Oh, and actually, yeah, yeah people are calling Loki out the... Ag, we are so back. We are so and, back. Yeah, and you can even stack that... You can protect that Loki with a Trieste, and uh, boy, that runner's having a bad day. There's going to be such a mean Glacier HB coming our way. Don't I'm call not happy about it. <laughs> yeah, we might we might have to get get the get Scry back in the game. Tell him Loki Ag is back. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, any other thoughts about this card? I I have. I'm hoping I can get this card has a, has a bit of an interesting history. I'm hoping I can get some someone from the dev team to talk with me about it at some point. But absolutely, uh, well, can't say more than that at the moment. But uh, all right. Uh, so we have another card that Jai dropped for us today, and uh, it's our first Shaper card. Um, Excuse me, my voice is apparently going a bit. This is Spree. It is a zero-cost run event in Shaper. And it doesn't say run R&D! Hooray! Uh, <laughs> I, I uh, Place three power counters on this event, then run any server. Hosted power counter, host one installed Trojan program on a piece of ice protecting the attacked server. This is two influence. So this is a this is a card. This is as Jai called it, Trojans jump stone, uh, because uh, it involves Trojans and it is an event that cares about uh, like raindrops cut stone that uses power counters. Uh, so um, Eric is asking, can this move existing Trojans? And this can move only existing trojans this host one installed trojan from one piece of ice to an ice protecting the attacked server so you can pull trojans to help you from other parts of the board um so i mean yeah uh, this is a fun card um it's um it's really handy i think for um like if you're doing any kind of like deep dive shaper deck, like say you're doing deep dive out of Arasana, um, I think this is useful to have because it lets you say you have, say the runner has twigged what you're doing and they've put multiple border controls on centrals. Obviously you have your Pisha Shows um, and you have your Hushes. 
if you pre-installed your hush you can do this click one or click two or whatever you'll get your click back from your pisha shell maybe um or maybe you've got your wheels out or whatever and you can use this to bring your hush over to blank their border control on whatever server you're running um without needing to spend the click on a hush or burn a simul chip or whatever um it also like i could see this being useful in like if you're splashing stuff like botulus or tranquilizer um um wait does this do you get the tranquilizer d-res when you use this no is that tranquil on, on, on host so tranquilizer is when your turn begins or on install damn um, yeah so so spree does not count as a new install of the card it only moves it about um Okay, still. That's still really useful to have. Also, like, you can slap Vandal. Say you're Arasana. You can slap Vandal the first ice, and you can use this to, like, go bing, 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 bing on the rest of the ice in that server. Um, God, you could do it with Cubon and make, like, 25,000 credits on a run. Um, yeah, this, this is one of those, like, not super amazing shaper cards that i'm gonna spend more hours than i deserve or that i that i that i'm willing to admit in public uh thinking about and trying to make work um yeah, you're, you're all being too polite sorry you're all being too polite this is shaper bullshit right <laughs> <laughs> like yeah this it is absolute nonsense. <laughs> I, I don't understand how this card works <laughs> i don't know what you do with it i'm not gonna go anywhere near it myself but i know that there are people who are obsessively uh, play this card, uh, getting just the right trojans on just the right programs and make something horrible. Um, so it scares me and doesn't interest me in equal measure. <laughs> 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 the best thing about this card, right, is there's a frog on a turret. Yeah, the, I yeah, mean, the, the it is worth turret saying turret. this is an amazing piece by, by Fennec. Um, yeah. I, I desperately want this art on like a play mat on like sleeves i want it as my wallpaper for my pc um mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. this art bangs mm -hmm. it's so good yeah i think maybe my you could favorite... take like five at five elements from this card and make them stickers quite happily couldn't you it, it's really cool <laughs> i did say someone that say wait why did you make a keiko plushie when you could have made a frog tank plushie uh so <laughs> maybe that's I'll, I'll i'll contact our plushie guy and see if we get can get that one going um, we know you get you get the frog tank like um what are those like gundam figures that people make uh <laughs> the, like the put together gundam action figure model things i want one of them but for the frog tank i want to have like a frog tank model on my desk <laughs> dan i know you're not the biggest shaper player around but i'd love to hear your takes on spree that's exactly why i think this card is for me as a subpar Arasana player who always, like, I feel like I always mismanage my Trojans or they get stuck somewhere. I'm like, oh, if I just remembered last turn to move this thing here. Like, Spree is going to be the way to fix that. Of like, oh, I, I really have to get in that server. And I really want to hush, like, three different cards. You know, like, I think that's going to be a, a nice, like, little saving grace for, for me at my ability level. Um, but I also think it's going to be really fun for me to try and make trojan padma work <laughs> um just give yourself like really want to run r d and use spree to just get a nice extra install and, and move all my stuff around um i'm not gonna say it's good but i am gonna say i'll try it <laughs> yeah i mean this is this is a great card where like people want to put this in a deck but no one's quite sure what you're supposed to do with it which i think it's like a great place for a card to be when it's spoiled like this is exciting. This is like a huge bait. Uh, and maybe someone will find something to do with this that's really amazing. I think uh, something that they called that Jai, forget one of his, I think it was one of his guests called out. This can, you can kind of supercharge a chisel with Spree. Um, where like if you're encountering three different ice, you can charge the same chisel three times uh, in a single run. Or like charge it twice and drop it off on a different ice though there is always a limitation and this is going to be kind of a subtle one that the it all trojans will have to end up on the run the server you're running against so you can't like 
oh, I'm going to run through two ice and then drop my chisel off on the server I want to go and attack uh, next. Uh, but. Oh, it was Jai. Sorry, Jai. I was walking to work, so I was maybe not distinguishing voices the best, but. Um, yeah, I guess, so, um, the other, the other identity that I think maybe looks at this in addition to Padma would maybe be Kit. Um, and I think the big reason why is, uh, this makes Egret a much better card for Kit, right? Because now you can move the Egret around. And so now an Egret, a Decoder, and a Spree probably effectively get you in any server, uh, which does seem like potentially a, a neat angle to try, but um, you know, call, calling calling Anarcho and and Funky Man Dan out on the spot. What what deck do you think you're going to try and put Spree in first? I already started like opening the inner DB for this like Spree Trojan Padma mess. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that is what I'm going to try first. What what Trojans are you putting in that Padma deck? I just, I like Slap Vandal, I like Hush, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, if you're trying to do like a, anything with extra clicks, you do Peaches out, like I like the utility Trojans that, you know, like I always want to use, but feel like I, I can't spend the clicks on as often as I want because I'm not Arasana, um, but like, I, they, it just feels so nice to say, oh, I have, I have the solution to that. Um, are you gonna try and put... is also a good shout. I was about to say, are, if you're playing Padma, could we do could you do Poison Vial, Slap Vandal, Spree as like one of your main breaker engines? Uh yes. That, that just sounds, remote camp for days. That sounds like a lot of fun. And then you can like you you could probably still play UAV and Spree in that deck and not feel like you're going over the top because UAV and Spree are doing different things for you, which might be kind of fun. Uh, how about you, Anarcho? What what deck do you think you're you're gonna try this out in first? Oh, I'm like 100 percent putting this in in Arasana and mm -hmm. seeing what I can do with it. Um, I kind of want to try like combo Arasana, like Pichachos and deep dives. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Can you do like what? Surely there's like some nonsense you can do with Pichachow in this. So like, if you, how yeah. do you get your two clicks in one run? You can get three clicks out of Arasana out of a single Pichasau and Spree now. Um, which is, you have Pichasau already installed. You, on a three deep ice server. So, some requirements there. Uh, you pass the first ice, uh, and you can Spree the Pichasau onto that ice. Then you Spree it onto the second ice. It bounces back to your hand. Then you Arasana it onto the third ice, and it bounces back to your hand another time. Um, but you get three clicks out of a single run that way. So Cold Ones is back, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I know. Oh. It's, uh, what, what was it called? Encore rotated just slightly too early. I mean. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've been robbed, Jeff. We've been robbed. It's robbed okay. Robbed by I... rotation. We can do it in Eternal, Anarcho. We are the people that yeah. play Eternal. We can do this there. We just have to convince our opponent to install two pieces of ice, which may be impossible. But uh... I've ne I've never seen it happen. Never, <laughs> except in like Mati. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, this this is maybe a decent Mati card, right? Because you get to move it after they after they go and throw their Johnson's yeah, down. Yeah, they, they they cheat out something ridiculous, and then you like. You use this to like bail yourself out of the the horrible Mati ice. That yeah, they put yeah. In front of you. No cortex lock for you today. Um. Ha. <laughs> All right, uh, Ed. I'm gonna punish you and ask you where do you want to play Spree. <laughs> 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 I absolutely do not want to play this card at all. It, it's the kind of netrunner that I hate. I have to think about what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I'm, I played Adam pretty much solely for two years, uh, so that I didn't have to think about what I was doing. I'm uh, just, you know, run into things. Um, I have no interesting takes on where you should be playing this at all. I'm sorry. Not, not, not a shaper guy, Ed. No. 
<laughs> Not at all. I, you know, my first my first tournament, I took Pirate Haley uh, to, and I think I won one and lost six. So that was Oof. the last time I played Shaper. Yeah. I I'm proud of myself for remembering all four out of directives because I think I played Ed about. Or I think I played not. I didn't play Ed. Uh, I I played Adam about like five times total or something. But it's fine. You only ever need to remember three of them. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always be running hasn't existed since like 2016. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we have one more Shaper card to talk about, and uh, I'm gonna say this one's a banger. Uh, I think it's a weird one, but I think it's a banger nonetheless. This is a two-cost, one MU program, daemon subtype, called Muse. When you install this program, search your stack, heap, or grip for one non daemon program. If that program is a Trojan, install it on a piece of ice. Otherwise, install it on this program. And this is for influence. Um, yeah, I, I do want to talk about why I'm excited about this card, but I want to let other people have some takes on this first. Um, so Ed, I'm sure you're going to have a lot to say about Muse. So <laughs> let's start with you. <laughs> uh, about, so about two years ago, I was on a, a podcast that, um, uh, it's called the slums cast. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, and, and they do a segment where it's which card would you like to remove from the game, uh, beat into the sea and set fire to in equal measures. Um, and I said SMC. <laughs> and I see this card and I get that little, you know, like, like someone's walked over your grave. That little shiver down my spine. Ugh. Ugh. Um, am I reading this card right? It is a bit like SMC, isn't it? <clears throat> I, I would certainly agree. I mean, this is almost kind of like ONR SMC. Where the it was uh, two to install up front, but I think there's a couple of differences. Mm. Obviously, the the big one being that Muse doesn't have a paid ability window ability, so that element of SMC is gone from the card completely. Right, so the Shaper player can't just install SMC and run your remote. They would have to install Muse and make a guess about which breaker they need to use, uh, which is definitely a bit of a downside. And another one, which is, hey, if you're installing a non-Trojan, where does that program go? It goes on Muse. So if I like install a Unity, it just ends up sitting on top of Muse and basically eating up an extra MU. It's the same cost to get out as SMC, but I've made my Unity cost uh, two MU, which may be not ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, um. The only other thing that I'm going to say about this is uh, NSG resident playmat expert uh, Havi did make this into a playmat earlier for fun, and it's a delight. Um, it's stunning as a playmat, and, and and it is genuinely my favourite piece of art uh, from the set. It, it's yeah. awesome. I really like it. It's such a unique style. It's so cool. Really cool. Yeah, the style of this card is, is really something else. It's pretty amazing. Mm. Um yeah, it's it's quite it's like unlike anything else I feel like in the set, but still feels so consistent with the universe and just so splashy and unique. I don't know, it's it's pretty great. It's iconic. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but Anarcha, we were cutting you off. Uh... No, no. Um, uh, I I I think this card is fucking great. <laughs> um, this is okay so it's i think you look at this and i think it's definitely um in a similar way that um end of the line in Bore it was in Borealis. i can't remember which one it was i think it was midnight I, it was uh parhelion i think parhelion yes yeah, so in a similar seven. way that, in a similar way that end of the line was in parhelion when we still had boom in the pool um in the card pool it's very clearly that it's it's you'll get these cards that are kind of like cedar cards um muse existing in a world with smc like you're going to be playing smc a large percentage of the time unless you're doing um weird stuff which 
there are shapers that can do weird stuff in this in this format. Arasana is the big one. I think this card is great in Arasana. Um, I think it's extremely good in Arasana, actually. Um, but um, in a world where we don't have SMC, so you know, you look ahead to Dawn, um, this kind of fills that role of shaper tutor program um, to to deal with like getting gear checked or whatever. There's obvious limitations. You know, there's the upfront cost, there's the MU cost, there's the fact that you need to kind of pre-guess what you need to do, as you mentioned. But I think it's like, this is a cool take on that role that SMC has been filling. Um, and I think it's really interesting. Um, I think it kind of shows kind of what um, what potential like vision or future NSG has in mind for the faction. Um, in current standard, um, this card in Arasana is uh i think incredibly strong um you can you if you have this in hand but you don't have any other trojan or say like so you, you can go you can run a server you haven't used your arsana ability let's say that they res a border control you can use this to two to your hush um with arsana you can use this to get any of your um trojans in your deck um at instant speed with your id ability um, because you will play Muse, you will fetch the, the tutor, you pop the tutor on the ice, and then Muse will die, um, but you don't care because you, it, the Trojan exists now on the ice. Um, so this acting as a tool, um, this basically acting as three more copies of any Trojan in your deck is really good. Um, if you are a World Tree enjoyer, and who isn't, um, this is great in World Tree decks. Um, again, you look at the World Tree Arasana deck, you can slap this down through your Arasana trigger, um, find your World Tree, um, and... Oh wait, no, that doesn't work because Arasana's going to kill this. But you can still you pop this Muse down, you get your World Tree, and then you start getting your value out of it. Um, there's fun SMC plays that you can do with... Or not SMC, um, symbol chip plays that you can do with Muse. Um, you can recycle your symbol chips to basically your symbol chips turn into deck tutors. They turn into like SMCs themselves, which is really good. Um, um, yeah, this card I just think it's super versatile. I think it's going to struggle in maybe Reg Shaper, like something like Deep Dive Lat. I think mm -hmm. it's going to struggle to find a home in the deck for Muse, um, just because that deck would prefer to have SMC because it is it it's you know good for clot it's good for breaking through like gear checks it's better with overclock but in stuff like arasana where you kind of want that kind of instant speed flexibility i think this card is is bonkers good um and it's definitely something that i'm like i'm gonna probably be starting on my arasana decks with like three copies of these um i probably end up working my way backwards and just putting smc in but <laughs> i think this card is and i also think in, like the startup context i think this is quite good um, in the startup format where shapers are currently lacking that program shootering. Um, I think your your kit or your tau deck in startup is going to be want to, want to want to run three of these. Um, I will miss SMC clotting people um, when we mm -hmm. have Muse and no SMC, um, but that's just the, the, the prison shaper player um, in my heart <laughs> speaking. Um, yeah, I, I think... So I agree with everything you've said. I also want to point out this card recurs from the heap, which I think is such a yes. big deal. Um, like recurring from the heap, especially like, you know, I look, I, I, I was, it was very hard for me to not take a long tangent in my meta recap review, just to talk about Cuba on Arasana, which didn't quite put a huge showing out this year but it didn't not show up either like it was really difficult to justify spending a simul chip on a cubon but spending a muse when you already have your rig set up or when you have control of the board to get a cubon from the bin seems quite exciting to me um obviously you can pull from the heap as well um but like or from the from the stack to grab another one but the like fact that this does recursion and tutoring from the deck is a very impactful piece. Another thing I want to mention is that unlike you know self modifying code, it like they both cost two to find the program you want. But self modifying code is pay two credits. Muse is 
uh, affected by all install discounts. So like for those of you who are cultured, that means that you can use Urban Art Vernissage to go and install this for free. So now you get your tutoring effect at a significant discount. And then, um, you know, for those of you who are less enlightened, you might be running DZMZ Optimizer. Um, and that will also work with Muse. So, uh, you know, you have some in-faction ways already of making this a real discount. Now, the MU cost, if you're tutoring non-Trojans, is going to be real. Um, but, oh yes, and uh, everyone else is shouting out the even better synergy, which is, of course, Paladin Poemu, the Scourge of Standard. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I think that's, like, a good like start of cards um someone was lucas was asking chat why would you install from the grip and i think there's two reasons one you have uh this is the boring one you have lily pad out and so when you installed muse you draw you drew you draw a card and then resolve muse's effect at least i think that's the case maybe jamie will correct me and say because it's a comma you just keep going um but that would be like the first reason the second reason is because you really have the program you want in hand, but you want to also charge your environmental testing uh, because we are, we're are we deep in the shaper sauce here. Uh, and so you just want to get two charges on your environmental testing by installing a card from your hand with a different card from your hand. Um, so that would, be, that would be the other reason, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think like Muse is really <laughs> interesting. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry to cut you off, Jeff. There, I, I was gonna say, as a, as an uncultured DZMZ enjoyer, um, mm. I am wondering about dealing with MU, and especially because we've seen like a lot of different fun um, programs that aren't necessarily your core breakers. I wonder if there's gonna be any like worthwhile MU support um, elsewhere in in this set or even in the future. It's like not the most sexy part of Netrunner, but I do want to be able to play cool programs, and I, I think you know, I, in, an, in an SMC list future, you might end up paying that extra MU cost with Muse, and so how are we going to like offset it to make sure I can install all of my jank and a, and a turbine? Um, I'm curious to see how that turns out. Well, conveniently NSG did grace us with a plus 2 MU console, and maybe you do need to play DZMZ, and I should not take my unenlightened stance on that so bad, uh, so strongly. Yeah, especially. Do not, <laughs> do not be a uh, do. You know, beware false prophets, people. Okay, DZMZ <laughs> is perfect with Muse. It gets it deals with the MU problem. It gives you the discount. Okay, you know we are. You know, if you're playing, if you're a shaper player, like you know, do not do not let do not think so narrowly about your MU options. Okay. There's no more Akamatsu, <laughs> so we gotta, we gotta, we gotta take what we have. <laughs> oh my goodness, I want Akamatsu back more and more every freaking day. Uh... Oh, you and me, brother, you and me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I think there's another thing, like you know, the World Tree conversation. I think is um, the uh, like the other like really like this is the like. The cool part about Muse to me is not, oh, we get an SMC. Like, when SMC rotates, we'll still have Muse, right? Um, it's that you get to use... this. Is, Muse is like every part of the Buffalo-style shaper where you get to use spec work. Uh, my goodness, where is it? You get to use cards like spec work. So I can Muse, find my Trojan. Maybe it's my Ika. The, the, a very fun little interaction is I can use Muse to install Ika, ignoring... Like, I can... Yes, I'm paying the two, but maybe I get to pay the two with like a DZMZ or a um, uh, a UAV credits. And then I get to put my Ika on a piece of ice. Then I get to spec work that Muse away, draw two cards, gain four credits, and kind of start ripping through my deck. Uh, you know, Aesop's Pawn Shop hasn't been a major meta presence for a bit, but like a target that a card that gets you something and then you can sell it for value later. Like that is the quintessential style of card that Aesop's Pawn Shop is looking for. And so, yeah, too expensive. Two costs is a little expensive for payout on Aesop's, but it definitely seems like an option. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think this is like that, this style, like this is another little 
piece of this card. Like, there's not one part of this card that is, like, I think clearly and obviously busted. Every part of this card has a downside, but you can be creative and use it in a lot of different ways in Shaper, which I think is very good. Um, people have been asking in chat, can you install Muse at 3 out of 4 MU, install a Cubon uh, to overwrite the MU? Um, and if you're installing a Trojan, you can do that. If you're installing a non-Trojan, you cannot. You would have to trash a different program. Um, so... Um, and arc V is like, hey, if we if we if cash was still in the card pool, it would be wonderful to search for cash, install it on Muse, and then sell both of them uh, back to Aesop's. But wait, can you sell hosted cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah cause they the cards oh, you, you you install the card on Muse, so it counts as an installed card. Oh my God. Aesop's Ar Arasana, let's go. We are gaming. We are so gaming. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, now the Arasana engine didn't have enough moving pieces before, so we're going to add Aesop's to it as well. But, this card's going to be like 80, this deck's going to be like 80 cards, and no one can stop me. <laughs> Actually, chat is calling out a really nice one, which is Muse into Fermenter, uh, which is arguably better than SMC into Fermenter because you could sell that Muse back later. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think that's, that's a fun little interaction. Um, I think yeah, it's very I'm sad that Wu, Wu never got to see Muse because <laughs> Wu with Muse sounds absolutely gas. Yeah. World Tree Wu with, with Muse is, uh, definitely one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> definitely one of those things. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to remember if, if Wu actually saw any playtesting. Oh, yeah. Wu actually did see playtesting with, with Muse, I think, at one point when, yeah, there was some silly stuff that you could do with that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, like, you know, I, I think I'm also always a little bit baited by environmental testing. Um, because it's just like a great payout and Muse does like Muse just like SMC charges it very very fast uh and I don't know it's a uh, it's a nice little card so uh yeah I appreciate so Dan and Ed thank you for letting me and Arco go on for it looks like about 10 minutes about a two cost <laughs> daemon um it was awful. I, I hated every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to make cards for for people like you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think rather than asking you two for final thoughts, I will release you from this prison and instead say, what cards are you most excited about to start playing with uh, once spoiler season is over? Or there are a couple cards still left to be spoiled for, I think, every faction. Is there something you're really hoping to see in the cards that coming up? Uh, and I'll start with Dan, if you, if you want to answer first. Yeah, I've been really looking forward to anything I can put in Atea. I had a lot of fun um, playing around with a lot, a lot of different versions, and I think some of the recently spoiled Jinteki cards that give some some pretty fun things to do. Uh, like, I'll be messing around with Tributary for sure, um, but I think I'm also going to try and make some kind of, like, tag me Atea deck that is better in PE, but I will do it anyway. Yeah, Cloud Eater does seem like a very fun card uh, to start building some tag tag me Shinteki about. So, uh, Ed, how about you? What cards are you most excited about to start building with once the full set is out? I mean, I've got inside knowledge, so I know where the good stuff is coming, and it's coming tomorrow on your uh, on your video, <laughs> isn't it, Jeff? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In your position of authority, you've taken the cards that you wanted. So, um, <laughs> look. <laughs> Look, Jai maybe got one of the cards I was supposed. Or oh no, it wasn't Jai. Someone else got one of the cards I was. Oh, I think I think Baldur Wu got kill got an exciting card stolen from him by me. Uh, so apologies, Baldur Wu, if you're here. Uh, but uh. no, genuinely, you know. So this is my first. Um, this is my first preview season 
uh, in my position, and I've been very hands off because Mike does such a great job each time around. Um, and it's just been fun seeing like the full cycle of preview season, right from you know being involved with art briefs and stuff like that, and editing art uh, all the way through. Um, it's been great. I've really enjoyed myself, and I'm looking forward to the weekend. Fantastic. And Anarcho, what are you most excited about of all the cards we've seen? Um, I think I'm most excited to play um, Asa. I think Asa has gotten some really sick cards. Um, there's the new Archived Memories clearance that was released. Um, I've already forgotten the name of it. Um, <coughs> it is Corporate uh, Hospitality. Yeah, I yes. am. I am. I. I th- sometimes in Arco, I think you and I share a single brain cell, and uh, <laughs> just playing corporate hospitality fully up Asa just seems like the most fun thing to in the world to me. And I don't yeah, care that PD is going to be better still somehow. Uh, yeah, don't care, don't care. <laughs> it, this this sounds way more fun. Um, <clears throat> yeah, corporate hospitality Asa sounds like total gas. That deck has wanted violent level clearance for years now and it's kind of gotten it back um so yeah i'm looking forward to playing some asa obviously shaper um is going to be just gas with what we've seen we've burner as well which is a really cool like pressure event um so yeah i'm gonna be playing a bunch of arasana um i have a little bit of knowledge of what comes up because i i was still with nsg and play testing sort of um as this set was coming out so i don't know exactly what what is uh what was final in the works but um um yeah there's some stuff that i think has has not been spoiled that i think is 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 gas that i i can't wait to see people's reactions on but yeah shaper and hb that's my uh that's where i'll be be putting my reps in when the set comes I, out i should put a bet down on that because that would have been easy <laughs> for me but <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you anarcho thank you funky man thank you ed uh, it's been a real treat having all three of you on. We managed to keep this to an hour and a half of stream time. So uh, color me shocked. Um, and uh, thank you all three so much. Join- thank you everyone in chat for chatting. Um, and it sounds yeah, like you jo- got- join us for the after show with Ed and Stream. Um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be doing... Um, Ed and Stream after dark. Yeah, yeah we'll, be do- we'll be doing da- daily casts after dark. Yeah. Uh, Come along for your your hot takes and post watershed opinions <laughs> at uh, at eleven p.m. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, with that said, I'm gonna put a lid on this one, and I will see you all hopefully for an eight a.m. Eastern time spoilers drop tomorrow. Maybe seven. We'll see how I'm feeling, but probably eight. Uh, and yeah. Uh, With that said, good night, everyone, and, and thanks for tuning in.